Luke chapter 10. And I want you to go to verse 30. Thank you, VLCM. I know pressing on Mother's Day is sometimes difficult. But you made it to the house of the Lord. Mothers, I hope you feel love. Men of God, I hope that you can see that your love toward the mothers is showing today. Mama, I love you. Happy Mother's Day. But now let's turn, turn our eyes to love. For God is love. Let's turn our eyes to the word. When you have Luke chapter 10, please stand on your feet and say word. 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 You know, say hold on. Amen. Luke chapter 10. I'm going to start at verse 30. In this particular passage, uh, right before this, an attorney, an expert in religious law, stood up to ask Jesus a question. He stood up to test him. And he said to Jesus, teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, what does the law say? What did Moses say? How do you interpret it? And the man says, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says, you're right. Do this, and you'll have eternal life. And the man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, well, if I'm supposed to love my neighbor as myself, who is my neighbor? And Jesus responds with this in Luke chapter 10, verse 30. Jesus answered and said, I'm reading from the New King James Version. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. He crossed the street. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. Somebody say, but. but. A certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, he wasn't done. When he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, the fallen man. And whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among thieves? That's what Jesus asked the, the attorney. Did you know it all? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said, go and do likewise. Go and do the same. Show mercy. Amen. I want to keep reading. Verse 38 says, now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her la casa. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and complained. I mean, said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus, talking about the Lord, answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. In our text today, Jesus shows up for Martha and Mary, and the Good Samaritan shows up for the fallen man. And so today, I just want to talk to you about love shows up. You may be seated. Love, love shows up. You ought to just high five your neighbor and say, love shows up. Love shows up. Love shows up. Lord God, in the name of Jesus and by the power of your Holy Spirit, God, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for the people of God that press their way to hear a word from God. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, because your people are present, we thank you for being present. We know that you are the ever-present God. We know that you are present in the time of trouble, and you are present in the time of sickness, and you are present in the time of storm, and you are present in the time of difficulty. And God, we give you the glory for being present in your own house. So, Father, we give you permission since you're here to bless us to uh we ask oh god right now that you would heal us we give you permission right now to correct us we give you permission right now to show up and to show out we know that love shows up over and over so today we thank you in advance for showing up showing up in the word showing up in prophecy showing up for your people today in the name of jesus before we leave these doors we know that you're going to show up and you're going to show out god in the mighty name of jesus now god that you show up for me, God. Mortify my flesh. Mortify my fears. Mortify my insecurity. Mortify in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, decrease me so you can increase in me, God, so that you would be glorified. 
glorified. The saints would be edified. Some sinner might be sanctified, but the devil would be horrified. It's in the name of Jesus we declare to be so. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus we pray. Hallelujah and amen. amen. Love shows up. We've been on this love series. We've been here for quite a while. We learned uh, that love covers. We learned that love covers a multitude of sins. You don't have to worry about your sin. You don't have to worry about your mistake. You don't have to worry about judgment from God because love covers a multitude of sins. We, we've learned that love is powerful, so powerful that it casts out, it kicks out all fear. Uh, love is no stranger to fear. It's stronger than fear. Yeah. And if you happen to be afraid of something or someone, you might want to show your love. Uh -huh. uh, we learn that love is a lifter because Psalm 40 says that he, God, brought us up out of a horrible pit, out of a miry clay, and set our feet up on our rock and established our goings. And so we learn that God will pull us out of the pit because love is a lifter. We learned that last Sunday, we learned that love never fails. How many of you know that love never fails? Uh, do I have any witnesses in the house that will testify that love never fails? Uh, we learned last Sunday that blood, the blood in our bodies is our life force. It's hypostasis. It's the substance of man. And we cannot survive without blood. And we, we cannot survive without uh, the efficiency of blood. Because when we are blood deficient, our bodies become weak. And our bodies become low. And it's hard to breathe. And it's hard to think. And it's definitely hard to love. And so like blood, love is the hoopatosis or hoopostasis of God. It's what God is made of because the Bible says that God is love. And like blood, love is holding us together and keeping us together. And the Bible also says that God is love and God is spirit. And they that worship God must worship him in spirit. Knowing this, we should conclude that love is spiritual. And that means that we have the potential to love people at the same level of God through our spirit. Don't love me by the flesh because it's a mess. Don't love me by my flesh because it's a mess. Love me in the spirit. Yeah. We learned that a part of our weapon is love. For we wrestle not against people. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against our manager, our co-worker. We wrestle against principalities and powers and rulers of this darkness of this world and against spiritual weakness in high place. Therefore, we take on the whole arm of God. We, we take on love from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. We take on all of love just to stand. And so your best weapon against the enemy, your best weapon against the devil, your best weapon against his is love. Yes, prayer is powerful. Faith is powerful. The word is powerful. But all of that may not last because love will last forever. It will not fail. Look, look at your neighbor and say, love will never fail. Love will never fail. And then on Thursday night in Bible study, we discussed several key people in the Bible that showed the love of God. We talked about uh, the people in the Bible that showed agape love. We talked about the women that went to the grave and covered Jesus. Although they were not sure what to expect and although he may have been in the grave and he may have been in a dark place and he may have even been sticky, they still came to love on Jesus. Are you willing to love on people even though they're in a low state, even though they're in a pit, even though they're in a dark place? And so we talked about the agape love of God. Then we talked about how, how Hosea loved Gomer. Uh -huh. How Gomer kept messing up and not looking at Hosea. Uh -huh. how, how Gomer kept going on dates with other, other people besides her husband, but Hosea loved her continuously, unconditionally. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to touch that. But then we also talked about Abraham and Lot. And even though Lot left Abraham, Abraham still loved him. He loved him enough to intercede for him and to pray for him. He loved uh, Lot enough uh, to call him brother and instead of nephew. He called him by the spirit. He loved him by the spirit and not by the flesh. He, he, he loved uh, uh, Abraham, loved Lot so much that when Lot got in trouble, he got Lot out of trouble. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then we talked about uh, Elkanah, mm -hmm. Penina, mm -hmm. and Ham. We learned that Elkanah was not in 2019 but had two wives. <laughs> one named Hannah and one named Penina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Penina had a lot of children and Hannah had no children. She was barren. But Hannah was loved so much by Elkanah that he gave her more. The Bible says that he gave her a double portion. And although she had a double portion from her husband, um, that wasn't enough for Hannah because she wanted a baby. Mm -hmm. And because she didn't have a baby, Penina kept provoking her and making her miserable because she didn't have a baby. Similar to Mary and Martha in Luke chapter 10, there was a rivalry between two women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Don't, don't act like Penina and, and Hannah are the only ones. Don't, don't, don't act like Mary and Martha are the only ones. Uh, don't act like you're not, a, you don't have a Penina every now and then. Don't, yeah. act, don't act like every now and then there's somebody yeah. in your life that treats you like a Penina or complains about your worship like Martha did to Mary. Don't, don't act yeah. like that. But the Bible says that, that year after year when Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, Penina kept making fun of her about to go to church. And people of God, when people make fun of you uh, to go, of going to church and people say, you go to church too much and you go to church on Wednesday and you go to church on Thursday and you go to church on Sunday. It's too much and you're not even getting blessed anyway. Why don't you be like Hannah? Don't even say nothing to your penina and say something to your God. God, I still trust you. God, I'm still going to worship. God, I'm still going to praise you. I'm going to pray even though I'm hurting. Do I have any Hannahs in the house? Yeah. Yeah. And although Hannah um, didn't have a child, she desired one. She had the desire of a mother. I'm talking to you today. She had the tendencies of a mother. She had the wisdom of a mother. She definitely had the prayer life of a mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing like a, the, the prayers uh, yeah. of the righteous mother yeah. because they avail it much. Yeah. Oh, let me just take a moment to honor my mother. What you see in me today, what you see in this church today, what you see on the on the pews and the people in the pews, I, you better thank God that my mama was a praying mama when I was drunk and when I was high and when I was skipping school and when I didn't finish school and when I was cussing and when I was lying and when I was fornicating, my mama didn't talk about me. She talked to God. She said, Lord, I need you to take care of my baby. And it took some time, but I thank God that my mama was a praying mama. Aren't you glad that your mama was a praying mama? Even if it wasn't your mama, it was some godmother. It was some grandmother. It was some it was some aunt. It was some woman that all knew you, that prayed you through. Let's take a few moments to thank God for the praying women, to thank God for the praying moms. So, so Hannah had all of this. She had the house. She had the husband. She had, you know, the car, the money, the love from her husband. She went to church, but she was still void. Uh -huh. Anybody here still boy? Mm -hmm. So today, ladies and gentlemen, fathers and mothers, children or without um, adults and youth, if you are here today and you have everything you need, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> if you have it all together and, and, and you got it all made, you got a whole lot of money in the bank. You don't have any ailments. You don't have any aches and pains. You don't have any bad memories. You, you got it all together. You don't mess up. I'm not talking to you. But if you came in here today and you have some voids, and you have some hurts, and you have some emptiness, and you have some unanswered prayers, or you're lacking in some area, or, or you have some barrenness or some brokenness, I'm talking to you. If you, you came in here with some troubles, and you came in here with some concerns, and you came in here with some worries, and you came in and here with some questions and some issues, and you came in here with some paninas on your back, and if you came Hurt and some headaches and some aches and some pains. This sermon just might be for you because I 
other people and you've been a doctor and you've been a counselor and you've been a friend and you've been a maid and you've been something else in the bedroom I see you sacrificing I see you hurting I see you trying to go back to school I see you trying to start that business I see you trying to finish that book I see you doing the best you can and sometimes you lose more than you can and I want to tell every Hannah I want to tell every Mary I want to tell every Martha every
They're going to get you. Y'all keep watching these people on Twitter and y'all keep watching people on Instagram. Y'all keep watching the people that don't have no, no color. They don't, that, oh, y'all don't. Come on. So when the Apostle Peter, who preached the first sermon of the New Testament church, and 5,000 people got saved out of color? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yes. You know, so Jesus is excited here in the text because the people came um, back to him and they said, even the demons listen to us. Yeah. Because we have authority, even the demons, they lead people. That, that's what the disciples said to Jesus when they came back and Jesus said, glory to God. He didn't say glory to me. He didn't say we got a nice house and a nice building and a nice church and you got this because I taught you how to do it. No, he said, I have commissioned you. And I thank God that Jesus, that God gave you the revelation, the information, and the impartation. He didn't leave nothing out. Aren't you glad that Jesus will leave nothing out? He'll leave nothing out. He'll leave nothing out. And so Jesus, Jesus is having a praise party with his disciples. He's so excited about how they came back to him and said, even the demons, listen, um, so right in the midst of the praise party, say praise party. Praise, praise party. party. A doubter shows up. Oh, y'all don't get me. You know, doubters do show up at praise parties. Mm -hmm. Job will tell you that demons will show up to praise parties. Oh, y'all don't hear me today. I'm not just talking about in the church. I'm talking about when you get the job, you have to tell somebody they say good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that just happened to me. Maybe. So, here in the text, the Bible says, I'm in my text, um, one day an attorney, uh, the Bible says, an expert in religious law. An expert, you know the people that know everything. They know how to interpret scripture and they read the scripture. Yeah. He says, so, hey, teacher, you know, you can read the text and really realize that he didn't mean it in a respectful way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, he says, teacher, hey, you talking about this eternal life stuff. How do you get it? What should I do? And Jesus, he's so cool. You know, some of us would have went off. But Jesus is so cool. He says, well, what does what you know about say? Because you are an expert in the law of Moses. Since you are an attorney of the law of Moses. Uh -huh. Uh, you, you know that even those that know a lot don't know a lot? God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our I hope I'm helping somebody all right here. And so the attorney replies and says, you know, I, I interpret that we are supposed to love God with all we have. Our soul, our, our heart, our strength, our mind, and to love everybody, our neighbor, as ourselves. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, right, do this and you'll have eternal life. And the attorney wants to justify himself. He said, well, I hear all of that, but who is my neighbor? Y'all yeah. don't hear me today. Uh -huh. So he's got the premise, but he doesn't understand the promise. Uh -huh. He's got the information, but he doesn't have all of the revelation. Uh -huh. He's got instruction, but he doesn't have all the inspiration because he doesn't have the whole picture. Yeah. But we know in part. Yeah. And we prophesy. Oh, am I, am I teaching my right today? And Jesus don't get no attitude. He doesn't go off on a dissertation. Uh, he doesn't go in, into the Greek or Hebrew or Latin or Aramaic or Arabic. He doesn't go into homiletics or homiletics. He responds with parabolic apologetics. He responds uh, with a parable. And uh, apologetics is the branch of theology concerned with the defense and the proof of Christianity. He doesn't argue. He doesn't argue the proof because, you know, when two people argue, you don't know who's the fool. Right. So be careful when you argue on Facebook, you argue on Twitter, nobody can tell who's the Christian and who's the Gentile. Come on. Come on. Nobody can tell. So we got so much, okay, we we too busy talking about Aisha Perry and we missed the shootings at the school. We missed the laws that were passed down to try to shut our mouths. We missed the fact that Facebook doesn't want us to pray on Facebook anymore because we were too If you don't know about Aisha Curry, go ahead and give yourself a hand. That means you're minding your own business. Lord <laughs> God. I know who I, I know who I passed. I know y'all was on Facebook. I know y'all saw it. And so Jesus answered and said, 
He doesn't tell him, you know, he didn't go off. He says, a certain man. Uh -huh. <laughs> a certain man. You know, he's telling a parable. He's telling a story. He doesn't give names. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the preacher didn't have the, the answer to the question about stories. Jesus did it. Did it. Oh, uh -huh. glory to God. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and left him for dead. Y'all there? Yes. Yes. Look at the text. A priest came down the road, <laughs> looked at him, and went on the other side of the road and kept on. <laughs> a Levite came down that same road, <laughs> went over to him. Uh -huh. It says he came, he came and looked. Yeah. Looked at him and then went back to the other side of the road. <laughs> okay. 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 But verse 30 says, but verse 30 says, but a certain Samaritan. As he journeyed down the same road, came to where the man was, saw him, and he had compassion. Mm. Now, this is a Jewish man. This is a church-going man. And he just left church. <laughs> he just left Bible study. Oh, I don't know if he was late at night. I don't know. Come on, come on. He just left church. He just left from praying for the Lord. Glory to God. Hey, he just left from He just yeah. left. Yeah. The Bible says that trouble met him outside. Y'all yeah. yeah. do know that when you come church trouble is waiting for you. Okay. And, and the Bible says that he fell among thieves. Somebody say thieves. thieves. Even though he fell among thieves, they're just a representative of the thief. Yeah. Because the thief, the Bible says it's one thief. Yeah. Cometh not but to steal and to kill and destroy. So although it may be one or two or three men or women that may attack you, it's only one thief. That's, That's, right. Right. That's, right. That's exactly right. And so the thief is using his minions. Mm -hmm. His bandits, his representatives. Just make sure you're not one. Amen. And they stripped him of his clothes. But women, I promise I'm going to give you an encouraging message in a minute. Just let me get past it. Or they stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him for dead on the road. I mean, 1825. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And they were right there. The man had fallen. He was attacked. He was stripped. He was beaten. He's left for dead. Don't that sound like Jesus? He had fallen. Not that Jesus had fallen, but it looked like he had fallen on the cross. Yeah. Yeah. He was attacked by the thief. Yes. He yes. was stripped. Come on, Pastor. Yes. Come on. He was beaten. Why? Yeah. Transgressions. Yeah. And then he was left hanging on the cross for dead. Yeah. And look what happened. A priest, a Pharisee, possibly, a Sadducee, possibly, came and saw the man look. He came and looked at him and saw the man laying there and just kept on walking. Mm -hmm. And then the Levite. So, first look at the priest. Let me unpack this for just a minute. Y'all can give me a little time today. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says the priest, as my daughter would say, pastor. Yeah. Y'all don't hear me. The pastor. Uh -huh. The bishop. Uh -huh. okay. The bishop elect. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. The apostle in training. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come on. Came to where the man of God was. He was a man of God. And he saw him and kept on walking. Mm -hmm. The pastor glanced, crossed over to the side of the street, and went on his way. That's the pastor. Jesus. Let's look at the Levite, the temple assistant. Oh, okay. Right. Preacher? Come on, back your plane, ma'am. Prophet? Mm. Prophetess? Come on. Deacon? Yeah. Deaconess? Yeah. Head of the usher board? Oh, okay. Everybody. First lady? Yes. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Elder. Uh -huh. okay. uh, organist. Uh -huh. Keyboard. Yeah. Praise that. Yeah. Saw the man hurting on the side of the street. And the Bible says that he walked over to him. Yeah. Yeah. The, Bible says, the Bible says Levite. Okay. Um, it, it doesn't 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 say what or who it was, what family it was. I don't know if it was a core, I don't know. But a certain Levite came to him. At least the pastor just glanced. Uh -huh. But the the preacher came to him. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Got in his business, yeah. glanced, yeah, and said, "I don't have time for this." Uh -huh. How many people have you passed by and said, "I don't have time for this"? I'm too busy getting my money. I'm too busy getting my money. I'm too busy getting my promotion. I'm too busy trying to get my house. And you pass by the man that fell among thieves. But the Bible says, 
says that he, the man was a Samaritan. The Bible, the clear version says a despised Samaritan. Uh -huh. yes. Came along and saw the Jewish man. Now they're enemies. Right, right. Okay, the Samaritans and the Jews have a difference in theology, views, doctrine, yeah. creed, ordinances, definition of ordinances, culture, race. They're two yeah. different people. Yeah. Okay. Evangelicals and Pentecostals. Yeah. Baptists uh -huh. and Methodists. Come on. Come on. Denominations and non-denominations. Uh -huh. There's uh -huh. differences in theology here. Yeah. And the Bible says that the Jew, the man that had fallen among thieves, is, is really uh, despising the man who could come help him. Uh, yeah. Okay. The despised Samaritan. Am I helping y'all today? Yes. When you yes. despise somebody that you have disdain for, you might even hate them and loathe them and detest them, and then so you start shunning them yeah. and no, snubbing no. them. And rejecting them and disregarding them and not, not talking to them and renouncing them and condemning them. Wow. So the Jew needed help and love from his enemy. Wow. Oh, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Jew needed help and love and love showed up through an enemy. Right. Oh, y'all better stop talking about people because you never know who your love is going to be and how they're going to show up. Be careful how you treat people and be careful who you consider your enemy because your Samaritan may show up in a way that's unexpected. Your Samaritan may be of a different race or a different theology or a different culture or a different gender. Or your Samaritan may be a, a young black woman pastor and she's come to be your good Samaritan. You just might want to be careful how you judge your enemy. some people in this room that have been passed up by pastors. Right. And I'm so glad they passed you up because I accept you. I thank God for you every day. And I don't just glance at your issue. I don't just look at your issue. I have some witnesses in the house that will testify. I'll get down on my knees and help you get out of your issue. I'll go broke for you. I'll lose everything for you so you can get out of your pit. And all I'm trying to do is show you, look at Jesus. Jesus wouldn't leave you down. Because 
I got to go with the Zeke on Thursday night. He paid attention. He was attentive. That's yes. number two. Number three, he didn't pass. He had compassion. Mm, that's right. Okay. Write this down. He had compassion. And the, the Greek word for compassion is the word that says sympathy from the inward parts. Yeah. It comes from the word that we get the word spleen from. Splexna. The inward parts. It denotes the seat of our affections. It's a more longer when you when you see someone hurting, you don't just help them from your heart, you feel it in your gut. Yeah. Yeah. It hurts you. Yeah. Am I helping somebody yeah. today? Yeah. It's a gut-wrenching compassion. And in Exodus uh, chapter 2, that's what Pharaoh's daughter had in her belly when she saw Moses, saw the Hebrew boy coming down the Nile River. She had compassion, gut-wrenching compassion, knowing that her daddy didn't want him in the house. Yeah. No one. No one. He really didn't belong in the palace. She had gut wrenching compassion. That, that's what um, the father had on the prodigal son, although the prodigal son had left and he was returning. The father had compassion. Yeah. Okay? Can I, can I just help somebody else? You know what else? It, it showed up in the Bible. Uh, when Jesus saw the multitude hungry, uh, he, he got some uh, fish and he got some bread. He started blessing and breaking it because he had compassion. Yeah. He wasn't just trying to show his power, he was trying to show his passion. Yeah. Can I, can, I, can I just help you one more time? When, when it, and this really blessed me. It's in Lamentations. It says, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fell not. Uh, so when you're going through and you know that you are not consumed in the storm and in the sickness, it's because God has some gut-wrenching compassion on you and said, let me take care of my daughter. Let me take care of my son. Let me see about that. So, in the last part of the text, 
this is not the compassion that Martha is walking in. Oh, can I tell you for, for just a few moments that Martha is walking in what I call spiritual schizophrenia. The Bible says that she was glad that Jesus came in the house and she starts serving him and then she starts complaining. So in one moment she's happy and in one moment she's bitter. Okay. In one moment, she's, one moment, she's glad that she got the license. She's glad that she's got the ordination. She's glad that she's got the business. She's glad that she got the coverage. She's glad that she got a church home. She's glad. She's glad that she got a pastor. She's glad she got an apostle. She's glad that Jesus stopped by her house, but then she starts complaining about serving. Mm. I know. I know. I know. Verse 39 says that Mary was sitting at the Lord's feet while Martha was serving. And so Martha is serving and Mary is serving. <laughs> Martha is serving and Mary is serving. And both of them showed up to church. So, so Mary is serving at the feet of Jesus and Martha is, is serving in the kitchen and the culinary committee starts complaining. At least the priest and the Levite kept their mouth shut. They just kept walking. They didn't start complaining. But Martha is in the house of God. Complaining about the house of God. Because you know when Jesus showed up, that's the house of God. Oh, yeah. Y'all with me? And, and verse 40 says that she was distracted by all the serving and all the, the, the lits and all the Bible studies and all the Sunday morning serving and all the prayer. And, and she started complaining and she said, she said, Lord, don't, don't you care that my sister ain't on the prayer line? Don't you care that, that my sister don't you care? Don't you care that she's not helping me cut the cake? Don't you care? That don't you care that she didn't show up for hit? Don't you care? And the verse verse 40 says Martha was distracted because she was serving too much. Or does it say that she was distracted by serving? Okay. And so she tells Jesus, don't you think it's unfair? Who you who? I would never. But Martha was bold. Thank God for that. And um, he says, Mary, now Mary, Martha, Martha, he said her name twice. Martha, Martha. What you complaining for? You see this house? Didn't I bless you with it? Come on now. Your brother's going to get sick down the road, don't you know I'm going to show up? Because mm. love always shows up. Yeah, amen. Uh -huh. and, and, and he says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about the wrong thing. He didn't say stop serving. He said stop complaining, of, uh, complaining about serving. Yeah. Oh, y'all right. oh, don't hear me. Today. Right. He didn't say stop serving. He just said stop complaining. Yes. Come on. Jesus didn't even correct her murmuring, murmuring until she came to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she was mur uh, murmuring. If you ever uh, work with somebody and they get in the kitchen, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you hear it. <laughs> Jesus overlooked that. He kept preaching. He kept teaching. He kept pastoring. He kept having counseling sessions. Yeah. He kept showing up for the marriage at his feet. Yeah, that's right. Oh, y'all yeah. know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I know it's kind of heavy today. I know, but I'm, I'm going to get to some shouts up in just a minute. Come on, he, he, he never said stop serving or stop showing up or stop singing or stop preaching or stop praying or stop helping hit or stop going to move or stop wow or stop going to victorious you. He just said, shut your mouth and stop complaining about it. That's right. That's right. Martha, I know you have a lot going on. I know you got to serve over here and serve over there. I know you got work. I know you got a business. I know you got a husband. I know you got children. I know you got grandchildren. I know you, I know you not got great grandchildren on the way. I know you got this bill and that bill. I know you serve at home and you serve at work and you serve at church and you serve in mission and you serve in ministry and you serve in business and you serve your daughter and you serve your son and you serve your great grandchildren. But don't Your complaint show up more than your love. Mm -hmm. Mama, I know it's a lot. Yeah. I know you got to sometimes be mama and daddy. I know, I know it's a lot. I know sometimes you got to be mama and wife. I know, I know it's a lot. Let me help the brothers. Men of God, I know it's a lot. You, you got to go to work and then you got to come home to her complaining. I know, I know it's a lot. You got to get the complaints at work and then you got to get complaints at home. I, I know it's a lot. But here, here's the word of the Lord today. Love is going to show up and say it's not going to be. I know you've been praying for the heat. 
healing. I know you've been praying for the blessing, but I came here just for you to tell you that love is going to show up. So stop complaining, stop grumbling, stop murmuring, stop whining, stop accusing, stop charging, stop disapproving, and put your big girl, put big girl skirts on and big male pants on and say, God put me up and for God I'll die. I'll stop complaining and I'll start serving. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be Mary and Martha. I'm going to help in the kitchen and I'm going to serve in Jesus' feet. I'm going to help him and I'm going to worship with my hands. I'm going to help the youth and I'm going to say, thank you, Jesus. I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord. It was good for me to be in God's house. It is better for me to be a servant in God's house, a husband in God's house, a servant in God's house, a man in God's house, a woman in God's house, a singer in God's house, a preacher in God's house, than to be in the house of the wicked. I'm just glad that they sat up to me. Let us all hear Jesus. Let us all hear about a man. Let us all hear God. Aren't you glad that you are in my house? Let's serve the Lord. Aren't you glad that you came in today? I don't know if you're Martha. I don't know if you're Mary. I don't know if you're Lazarus. But I say to just lift your hands and say, I trust you, God. And I'm going to keep on serving. And I'm going to keep on worshiping until love shows up. Until power shows up. Until glory shows up. Until healing shows up. Until the miracle shows up. Because I know my name. I know in a moment. I know in a second. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew. I'm not talking about waiting in time. I'm talking about being a waiter. I'm talking about being a servant. They that serve on the Lord shall renew. They that serve on the Lord shall get some wings and mount up as eagles. They that serve the Lord shall be able to start flying, to start increasing, to start going up. I dare you to serve him because when you serve and you serve properly, God will give you some tips.
So can we give God some glory and love? Love is all over this building. Love is all over this building. There's some mothers in the house and some fathers in the house and some women and men of God that need some more love. So today I want you to be very careful of how you show your love. Are you going to be like the priest? And leave it, or are you going to be like the Good Samaritan? Can you can you be like Mary and Martha without complaining? Can you show your love because God always shows His? Love always shows up. Can you show up for love? I'm not just talking about in here, I'm talking about out there. With that crazy co-worker. With that neighbor that's always parked in your parking spot. Show love to police officers. Can you show love to people of different cultures and different races? Can you show love to people of different genders and different backgrounds? Can you show love? Can you show love? Because love always shows up. Yeah. While we were yes sinners, love died for us. Yes. Can we show love for him? Mamas, mothers in the room, I know that most of the time you're Martha, you don't have time to be married. But while you're Martha, you can you, you can hum in the kitchen. You can praise the Lord while you're braiding your child's hair. You can you can give God some glory while you're working on your job. You can take a moment to say hallelujah. You can be Martha and Mary. Just make sure that if you happen to be Martha in a season that you don't complain. Because love always shows up. Let's stop complaining about how we show our love. Mamas, I hope you were blessed today. Men of God, I hope you were blessed today. And that you're reminded that love shows up. If you're in this room today and you felt the love of God, you felt the love of God in a prayer, in a song, or in the word, or with your neighbor, and you want to accept Jesus Christ, <laughs> you want to accept love as your personal Savior, as your Lord, as your God, I encourage you to come. If you want to become a disciple of love and DLCM, won't you come? We don't have members because members pay dues. We have disciples because disciples follow Jesus. And if you want to recommit yourself, you can come. If you want the evidence of speaking in tongues to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you can come. And if you need prayer and intercession, you can come. And the song is softly played. I invite you to come. Let love show up in you. Stand up for love today. We all need more of Jesus. You're invited to come. What you have been seeking God for, you have already found it. 
So you don't have to doubt it. You don't have to question whether it's going to be here, whether it's going to go away, whether it's going to abandon you, whether it's going to drop you like everybody else, whether it's going to misuse you or abuse you. You're already in the right place at the right moment. And God says, what you've been praying for for the last seven years, I'm going to bless you in just a few more days. Not too many days hence. What you've been asking God for, are you sure this is it? Is it this time? I've been praying for it and I've been waiting for it. Is it this time? Is it the right time? And the Lord says, now is the time. Now is the time of the Lord's favor. Now is the time for the Lord's breakthrough. Now is the time for the Lord's open door. Now is the time. You've been faithful over a few things. Now is the time. You've been faithful over a few things at work. Now is the time. I declare right now in the name of Jesus that the desires of your heart will come to pass. You won't have to labor so hard. You won't have to go so hard. It's going to come to you easy as long as, long as you worship. As long as you give God your all. His best blessings are coming. Stop, stop asking. Rabbasan, asking and questioning like it's not going to happen. Just believe God. Believe God by faith. Oh God, take faith is going to do it. Faith is going to bring it. Yes, yes, yes. It's a yes from God. Hallelujah. We got to get out of here. You can stand all over your, over the building. And while you're standing, can we give God just a hand clap of praise? <laughs> worship it nice and prophetic. Just, just, keep, just keep worshiping. Just keep worshiping. Worship opens up doors of heaven. Don't, don't get tired. Just, you sit down for a good 40 minutes. Just open up your mouth and Clap your hands and give God some worship. I feel a prophetic bubbling up on the inside of me. We need some worshipers. Miss Sherry, I know you've been praying, and I've been praying for you as well. Uh, been praying for you consistently on your prayer requests. And no matter what the doctors say, no matter what your feelings say no matter what the body says no matter what 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 <laughs> what the machine says believe the word of the prophet believe the word of the prophet that you're already healed oh y'all don't know what you're praying believe that you're already healed I'm already healed I still gotta go there I'm already healed I got trouble 